We are in module two of the ITIL4 service disk practice certification training. This module is about the value streams and processes dimension of this practice. In this, the exam syllabus is to understand the three processes of the service disk practice, along with the inputs and outputs of each process, the key activities of every process, and how the practices integrate the processes into the organization's value streams. So by the end of this module, you will be familiar with the three processes of the service desk and how the service desk is integrated into the organization's service value streams. We begin with an understanding of some of the concepts that were learned in the ITIL Foundation course, namely the concepts of practices, processes, and the service value streams. To perform certain tasks or respond to particular situations, organizations create service value streams. There are specific combinations of activities and resources of multiple practices, and each one is designed for a specific scenario. Once designed, the value streams should be subject to continual improvement. Every practice in ITIL may include one or more processes and activities that may be necessary to fulfill the purpose of that practice. A process is a set of interrelated or interacting activities that transform inputs to outputs. A management practice is a set of organization resources from the four dimensions designed for performing the work or accomplishing an objective. A service value stream is a series of steps an organization undertakes to create and deliver products and services to customers. An example of a service value stream could be a value stream to develop a new service or a value stream to perform user support, meaning respond to a user query. A traditional value stream, which is a non-IT service value stream, could be when a customer walks into a car dealership and would like to buy a new vehicle. And it goes through several steps, such as uh, being received at the reception of the automobile dealer and uh, test driving an automobile and then making a down payment, etc., and eventually getting the car delivered to the customer. Further, many organizations follow best practice recommendations for various service management practices, such as service desk, change enablement, software development, etc. The service desk practice is one of the most adopted and mature practices. Organizations often start their IT service management journey with the service desk. However, the practices have been often adopted and organized in a siloed, a segregated, isolated manner, as if they were presented in the service management bodies of knowledge. But in reality, a flow of work required to create or restore value for a customer or another stakeholder is never limited to just one practice at a time only. It is usually a combination of various practices that make it happen. As we can see here, several practices are connected to uh, in the various steps of a single value stream. Now, these are the three processes in the service desk process. We have the user query handling, then we have the communicating to users process, and we have the service desk optimization process. The user query handling ensures that user queries are captured, validated, and triaged for further processing, which means this process has three activities. The communicating to users process ensures that various types of information are communicated to users through the appropriate channels. It has several activities, not just three. The service desk optimization process ensures that the lessons from managing user communications are learned and that approaches to this practice are continually improved. And we will see that there are three activities in this process. The user query handling. In the service desk practice guide, you will see pictures and all the information that is coming up on the slides um, here onwards. The user query handling, which is the first process we are discussing now, it ensures that the user queries are captured validated and triaged for further processing. We can see that there are three activities shown here in sequence, acknowledging and recording the user query, followed by validating the user query, and then triaging the user query and initiating the appropriate activities. If the query is not validated, then which means that the service will not be provided. And we will understand what these steps really mean. So each of these processes have specific inputs, activities, and outputs. We will consider the inputs and outputs first. 
In the previous slide, we looked at the three activities in this process, namely acknowledging and recording the query, validating the query, and triaging the query, and initiating the appropriate activities. But the overall inputs and outputs to this process are the following. The inputs are the user queries themselves, and the triaging guidelines and procedures of the provider organization, existing service management records, for example, incident records, change records, problem records, and so on, the service configuration information, IT asset information, and other relevant information in order to perform this process. The outputs from this process are two, the recorded and categorized user queries, and initiated processing of the categorized user queries. Now, you will have to remember this for the, understand and remember this for the exam, all these processes, the three processes and the activities within them. And uh, the, these are all very intuitive. And uh, so for example, because it's a user query handling, therefore naturally there would be categorized and recorded user queries and the processing of those queries will have to be initiated. So you have to think from an input perspective, what information need to be communicated to the service desk? Where do these inputs come from? Uh, are they coming from other practices? And how do these inputs really help the query handling? Uh, meaning what is the information really used for? In terms of outputs, what information is communicated by the service desk? And where are the outputs going to? Which practices might use that output information? And what do they use it for? And that kind of thinking will enable you to think from a value stream perspective rather than just from a process perspective. So here we are with the first step of this user query handling process, which is acknowledging and recording the query. The slide provides the comparisons of the, this activity when dealing with human interaction as on the left side. And on the right side, we have the dealing with the self-service with automation. So with human interaction, users expect a rapid response if they address the service provider for any reason, although there are increasing number of alternative and sometimes more efficient walk ways to help users, traditional phone support, email, chat, and walk-in channels remain the main key channels for many organizations, especially between an internal service provider and a wider business organization. Human interaction also enables empathy and relief in purely technological or business-to-business -business service delivery environments. On the right side, we have the automated support. Um, and in spite of that, any query that reaches a service desk agent should be met in a polite and standard manner so that users are met with a certain level of quality and shown that their query is welcomed by the service provider. Every interaction needs to be recorded into a query log or a user query management and workflow tool. The agents may need incentives to encourage the query recording uh, and records that they create are an invaluable source of data on service quality. And therefore automation is important for enabling this service quality. Alternatively, self-service can also be used to attempt to resolve user queries. Before the user needs a human response, there can be preliminary stages in response to a query that aim to resolve the query quickly. So these are known as self-service tools. For example, when a user contacts the service provider using a chatbot or a phone call to an interactive voice response system, the system usually can present some options to categorize the reason for the user's call. This can automate the query categorization and also suggest some known resolutions to the user. Uh, another way, the IVR system can publish important announcements about ongoing service downtime or upcoming changes that are affecting users. And uh, the system can also validate the user's identity. 